Well, hey y'all, I'm so excited about this recipe because it is my absolute favorite or very close second favorite fall flavor. Say that three times fast. Favorite fall flavor and it's roasted butternut squash. I absolutely love all things roasted butternut squash equal to how much I love pumpkin this time of year. This soup is completely healthy, mind-blowing healthy. Um, so before I bag it, I do wanna give you guys a couple of cooking tips for the recipe. So it calls for a, about three pounds of butternut squash that has been peeled, seeded, and cut into one inch, it says chunks in the recipe, but you know, cubes. Now I will be very honest with you, I am not a fan of having to dice all that stuff and I, you don't really buy butternut squash in bulk in the fresh produce. So I buy these containers, it's empty because I cooked with it, but these containers of butternut squash from HEB, I get two of them for this recipe. I know it is a little bit more expensive, but for me, if I'm meal prepping and I'm tired and I am nearing the end of my day, so you're probably hearing it in my voice, um, I just need the shortcuts where I can get them. So that's one of my shortcuts for this recipe. Also, you need to, if you're freezing this recipe, you do not need to cook the bacon yet. Save that for the day you are, you are going to serve it. Um, and you have to roast your butternut squash, your red bell peppers, and your onion with some olive oil, salt, and pepper for about 30 minutes before you make your soup. So add that time in as well um, for the blending of the soup. The recipe calls for an immersion blender. I own one, I love it. I definitely encourage you to invest in one. It's, they're not expensive at all. I think I got mine at the grocery store, but they sell them Walmart, Target, Amazon. If you do not have one and you have no interest in buying one, no big deal. Let your soup cool just a little bit and then put it in your blender. So you're basically going to be blending the roasted vegetables and chicken stock together to get this beautiful, perfect colored puree. I used my immersion blender. It took quite a bit of time because this is a huge pot and uh, there's a lot of vegetables that had to be blended, pureed, but I, I just did it. And the ne next time I might make it with the blender because I think that's faster. It's just you got to be careful when you're blending hot liquids in a traditional blender. So just, you know, do your research on your own blender and make sure that's okay and what they recommend, the manufacturer recommends. Um, however, if you have an immersion blender, you can blend it while it's hot, no big deal. Once you blend it, you put this pot back on the stove top, you continue cooking it according to the recipe, and then once everything's done, you uh, let it cool off. You either eat it for dinner that night or you bag it, which is what I'm gonna do. So the butternut squash soup is a family favorite. The flavors are super rich. It is comfort food at its finest. I will make this in bulk, obviously, but on a Saturday, on a Friday night, I will thaw it out in my, my refrigerator overnight. And on Saturdays, I tend to heat this up in my small slow cooker, or I'll do it on the stove top and I'll kind of cook it on low all day long just to keep it fresh and fragrant and just keep it warm. And when my children are ready to eat lunch or my husband's ready to eat, they can just serve themselves a bowl of the soup. I do fry up bacon and have it on the side um, next to the crock pot and they can add the crisp bacon to the top of it before they eat it. I also add goat cheese. My children don't, my husband doesn't, but I do and it's so incredible. If you're not a goat cheese fan, you don't have to add it. It's still delicious. Now, I will also whip up grilled cheese sandwiches with this soup, and it is impeccable. So, those are my little tips for the recipe if you're gonna make it. I cannot, cannot, cannot tell you how delicious this is. It's, it's totally clean eating, too. I mean, everything is fresh produce. There's nothing in here that's, that's not real food. So, that's what I love about it also. Now for this one, I'm gonna freeze it all in one bag because this is a recipe that gets eaten all in one weekend. Let me grab my ladle. I've done so much cooking, my other one's dirty. So 
I've mentioned in the past I ladle these so I can do my servings, but this one's just going to all go in in one fair swoop. Got a little bit on the bag there. No big deal. The soup is still warm. It's not cold. I will tell you while I'm scooping this out, once you have all your soups in the bags, and if they're not like room temperature yet, I like to keep them laying flat, and I spread them out around my kitchen, on my counters, on my island, on my table, and I just let them cool further before I stack them. Once they're room temperature, you can stack them and transport them to your freezer. You just don't wanna put warm or hot soups or any meals really in your freezer because they will affect the food that they're sitting next to in the freezer. So, okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this. I, would, I should probably start doubling this recipe, to be honest with you. I, I cannot wait for somebody in this workshop to try this recipe that loves butternut squash. I mean, if you don't like it, then of course, this really won't be the soup for you. But if you like butternut squash ravioli, which, oh, come to mama, that stuff is so good. You're gonna love this soup. And I do love that it is um, clean eating, but it's healthy. And that we're really filling up our families with real nutrition, real produce not anything coming out of, you know, a box. So I'm gonna wipe this up a little bit and then I'm gonna take it off. And I know I continue to do the same things in the videos, but it's for the people that don't watch all of them. This might be the only video they catch. So I want to show you again how to get the air out of the soup. So, Squeeze the air out as you zip it closed. And I'm just using Ziploc gallon storage bags. Um, I do tend to buy the Ziploc band, brand, not because I know them to be better, but because that's what Costco sells in the big bag package. And they've always worked really well for me. Okay, there's that. Now I'm gonna lay it flat. And this is a very full bag of soup. So this is definitely more than one meal for my family, but it will be eaten on throughout a weekend, which is why I'm not cooking it or storing it in smaller bags. Okay, so to get the air, once you lay it flat, lift up the top portion, unzip a little bit in the middle, continue pressing until that soup, I'm sorry, until that air is out of there, close it up, and you're good to go, guys. So this is not really room temperature yet, so I'm gonna go lay it flat just like this on the other side of my island. And when this thing hits uh, room temperature, I'll add it to my other soups in the freezer. Once again, store them flat and stacked. And that way, once they're, fro once they're frozen hard and you're looking for a meal, you can go through the layers, figure out the meal you want, and then pull it out and you're not taking over your freezer space with all these meals. When you lay them flat and you freeze them flat, you're very effective in your storage space. So I hope you guys try this recipe. I really do love it and I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. Okay, I'll see y'all soon, bye.